Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from the Automator, and uh, I have a spooky announcement, or at least it's almost spooky. So uh, yesterday, October 30th, there was an update to AutoHotKey, and we thought we'd walk through a couple of the interesting and subtle changes, the uh, things that are available. It's kind of cool. So, Right. Some of the changes that we're uh, going to be talking about are uh, not like groundbreaking changes, but um, it's good to have them there, and especially since a lot of things are being backported from version two to version one. Again, it's good that you at least give it a try, see what is going on, because Lexicos is not thinking about version one anymore. We do have G Suite at the moment going ahead and trying to port very useful stuff back to version one, but that will reach a point in which it's gonna stop. <laughs> so, But in general, the few things that he brought are actually available from version two. And actually, if you see here, all of that is just porting stuff from version two to version one. So there's a, a lot of good stuff in version two that you're not, you usually you cannot use it. <laughs> and actually we were discussing about this initial working there a few days ago, right? <laughs> so, so I will, we will go ahead and explain a little bit, but um, these two, I will not go too much into them because they are bitwise operation, uh, logical bitwise, uh, changes and that's a little bit advanced. Most of the people don't use that. If you actually go ahead and use that, then I recommend you reading about it. But um, this one here is not that difficult to understand. And actually you have tried it sometimes, yeah. but it's good to mention it for those who maybe don't know this. But you know that AutoHotKey is not case sensitive by default. So if you're comparing to stuff, notice that I'm forcing an expression here. And I'm comparing match to match. At this point, Auto Hotkey version one will tell you that that is true, which means that um, match and match are the same, is telling you. But if you use double equals like this, now you force it to check on a case sensitive uh, mode, which now is going to return false because even though they're both the same word, one of them has. The capital M and the other one doesn't. So right now you get false. What happens is that we didn't have a way to do the negative of that before. Remember that if you have uh, match equals match, you have one and you had the not equals to do the opposite of it. So this was the opposite. It would return zero because no, they are equal. So are they not equal? It would say, that's what you're asking. Are they not equals? And then it says, no, they are actually equals. That's what is going on. The same, at the beginning, we didn't have this. When you were doing the case sensitive one, you didn't have a way to say not to that. You had to actually put the whole thing in parentheses and then put a not outside of it. But now you have the not equals equals, which now should return true because it's true. They're not equal, right? So they're not the same because they're, they're not the case sensitivity um, uh, prevents them from being the same. So that is one of what they are. And I will not go too deep into all the others, but for example, a clipboard is a very nice addition. Just doesn't mean that you're going to lose clipboard, right? What it means is that now you can use either or, right? So you can say clipboard equals test. And now if I run this, you would have the both of them amounting to the same thing. Now, you would say, why would I need a second variable? Well, the thing is that in version two, we do not have clipboard at all. We have a clipboard, which is basically a little bit more consistent with the language because we have a program files, a working there, a loop field. So we have a lot of a variables. Clipboard was not one of them. It didn't make sense. They fixed it. But now they backported that to version one so that you don't have to make too much changes to your scripts. If you at some point decide to switch, then using a clipboard is already something that matches version two. The other right? thing to me that is really critical here is because most people, we use auto hotkey because I don't want to spend a ton of time coding, right? And I don't want to have to really overthink stuff. By allowing you to use the same variable, you know, in version one or version two, mentally taxing, it's, you know, it's, it's not as hard, 
right? So it's easier for me to learn one thing and stick with it, which is really, you know, like that's the goal of auto hotkey overall, as far as I'm concerned, the summary is I use it because it's simple. Now you can have one, regardless of what version you're using, it stays the same, which is awesome. Right. The changes are going to be mainly in the GUI stuff and stuff like that. But in other parts of the syntax, they're not going to change that much. Actually, if I, if I uh, tried many of my hotkey v1 scripts, the changes to it to version two is they're minimal. This is one of those variables that they were great in version two, and I was missing them in version one, which is a initial work in there. So what happens is that most of the times you say set working there to something else, let's say C slash path or whatever, that changes the working directory of your script. And now many, many uh, commands that you use are based on that path that you made. So what happened was, as soon as you started changing that, you, lo you lost what was the original working directory. <laughs> and so the workaround was having a variable, you know, that saved a working there, you saved it, did all the changes that you wanted, right? And then in the end, went ahead and changed a working there or set working there to old working work there. So you had to do all that, you know, just because you changed the working directory once or twice on your script, you would lose that information. A initial working there is awesome because now you don't have to think about it. You can change it as many times as you want. And if you want to know where your script was launched from or what was the context of the script when it was launched, you can always refer to this variable and it it will work just fine, you know? And, and, and that was something that I was using in certain situations. I usually code for libraries and with libraries, you include them on your script. So I lose my context where my library was located at. So I needed to do some changing of locations and having an initial working there where the main script was launched from was great for me. Then I was missing it in version one, right? And the last one that I would actually talk about is the ESET function. It's awesome. The thing is that in version one, you have this my variable equals test. And then sometimes, you know, and this happened to me today, right? We were like this. Okay, everything is working fine. But what happened? We were working with a client and part of our script was sending keystrokes into Windows. And one of the keystrokes just simply made it into my variable name and I kept working and relaunched my script. And now my script was not working. Whatever I was trying to do was failing. And I was like, but it was working just right now. I was clicking a button, it's working. I relaunched my script and now it's not working. Why, why? Well. There was something that happened that I didn't notice and auto hotkey didn't act five, 10 minutes trying to look for it because it was a short script. But just imagine this being a 10,000, 15,000 line script and you have a misspelled variable somewhere, <laughs> right? That was working yesterday and today it doesn't work, right? That's where this comes into play. What happens is in version two, let me remove this because version two is not, doesn't like the percent sign there. In version two, I would have spotted the issue right away because I get an error. Hey, this variable appears to never have been assigned a, va a value. And I would right away say, hey, an empty variable. I read the name and I say, oh, I probably misspelled that. That's what would have gone on. And I would right away fix that. And now it would work just fine. As I don't have that in version one, it is really tricky to solve some things. Now, Due to the fact that having something, a variable that has never been assigned a value throws an error, in version two, you have the isSet function that allows me to actually bypass that error. In this case, it would say, if the variable is set, use it. If not, then go ahead and say, not found, instead of an error. So now, Notice that the is set function decides whether this would throw an error or not. If I don't have it, it would throw an error right away. But now I can actually 
use an if statement on it based on if the variable is set or not. Now, quick thing, having a blank variable like that, still setting the variable to something, even though it's blank and there's nothing in it, it doesn't mean really nothing. It means that it is set to blank. So right now, if I use that right now in this variable, it's going to return true. It's going to say, yes, it is set. You see, it is set to something. As soon as I don't, then it would actually be, you know, uh, a problem. It would tell me zero because it's never set a, var a value. That's what is going on. So this function is really useful in version two. They are back porting it to version one. And the interesting part about it, even though version one doesn't throw an error and it doesn't complain about it, but now you can use an if statement based on whether you have set something on that variable or not. So I could always say, hey, if the variable, if my ver if is set this guy, uh, then use it, uh, new var equals my variable, or else set something to it, set default here. You know, so now I could definitely set a default value to a variable that has never been assigned a value. And at this point, I would just do, you know, that now works in version one, which, by the way, if I set my variable, uh, I need this guy here, it would actually tell, say, default instead of blank, because I can now use an if statement on it and set values to it. So again, we're getting a lot of things from version two. The reason for that is because version two is improving a lot, but you're gonna be missing a lot of stuff in version one. But this guy, he's doing a very good job at trying to get a few things back to version one. But um, Lexicos is not really thinking about improving version one anymore because there's a lot of little details about it that makes it very hard or, you know, not really practical to go ahead and rewrite everything in version one anymore. We have version two for it. Yeah, look at uh, most software systems now, like Microsoft and others, right? They, that was why one of the reasons why they made, you know, the upgrading to Windows uh, 10, you know, and 11 free is they want to keep people on one version because it's yeah. so much cheaper to maintain one and so much simpler. So I totally get that. But yeah, this is pretty awesome. Not only that, it's just the back, the, there's a lot of things that are going to break. Sure. So if you have very big scripts that are written in AutoHotKey version one, you don't want to rewrite the whole thing. So he's keeping version one, one place so you can keep your old script. But he's not really, I would say, in my opinion, he doesn't care about version one at all anymore. He's just focused on version two. And that's what he's improving. Yeah, so unless he finds a big bug, right? Then right. That, yeah, the bugs is the only things that he might, but not. he's not putting new, new features oh, into it. Yeah. All the new features are going to version two. So uh, that means that a lot of other things are not going to reach you. <laughs> that's the only part that is going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, at some of, point a version two we, we did uh several videos and webinars and whatnot on using version two so it's in the the url over my head here you might want to check them out if you're interested it's got a lot of great functionality and um you know there's it's different right like if you're a programmer you'll love it if you're not a programmer <laughs> you'll hate it <laughs> really mean, but it's not crazy complex it's just you no know, it's a little more standardized a little more uh less um not wiggle room, but what's I, the I th it's strict. It is a little bit right. more strict. So, so version two is a little bit stricter in a few things, but I would say we haven't lost the flexibility of auto hard key. Um, I still find it easy to do many, many different things that I wouldn't try them in any other language. Yeah. The only thing is that for people who are used to not having errors and just making it work, some of those things might be a little bit annoying. Yeah, the error reporting, we did a video just recently on the version two error reporting. Uh, yeah. That alone, without a debugger, is is a big step up. So yeah. check it out. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, hey, if you enjoy this video and learned something, please like the video. Really appreciate it. Um, and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. There you go.